Hey everybody, Teching and Barry back again. Oh look, we have uh, most of the Straw Hats back here. Most of the Straw Hats that actually matter. We got Robin, we got Frankie. Like, right at the beginning, everybody else is just kind of eh. Am I right? Am I right? I mean, come on now. At the end of the day, we all love all of the Straw Hats. But at the end of the day, Frankie and Robin, right? Like, everybody else. Okay, we got Nami there as a bonus. Usopp's there, great. Chopper and Zoro. Zoro's like... I think Zoro is vastly overrated, to be honest with you. I think, like, maybe, like, two people really like Zoro. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I was kidding. I was kidding. I was kidding. I was kidding. Oh, my God. You got to be careful. You know, honestly, if you say Zoro is overrated, oh, my God. Some people's heads exploded somewhere in the world, okay? Anyway, I hope you all had a really Merry Christmas, Happy Holiday, Winter, Festive Season, whatever you happen to celebrate. I just realized, you know, I've made videos about the Straw Hat's favorite ice cream flavors and the whole bakery thing. Oh, by by the way, I'm planning on, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it New Year's Eve, but I'm going to try to. Uh, the finale, the best bakery in One Piece, part three, the big finale right before 2023 hits. We have a few more characters we got to go through, and I may make it a live stream event. I don't know if it'll happen on New Year's Eve exactly, because I have some other stuff that might be going on that day, but I will try to work this in somewhere, because I'm like, okay, we got to do part three of the bakery video. Like, we have to, right? Okay, so just, you know, bear with me for that. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with that up here. Anyway, I was thinking about all these random videos I was making, and uh, I was thinking, Thinking, man, what it would be like if the uh, Straw Hats had like a secret Santa, like they gave presents to each, uh, each other for Christmas, right? And uh, that is not this video. That kind of led to what this video is, uh, Vegapunk giving really sick weapon upgrades to all of the Straw Hats. But I might make the, the Christmas secret Santa video too at some point. It's just an idea of how my brain works with coming up with new content for One Piece, okay? Well, anyway, yeah, uh, chapters, uh, well, not just chapter 1070, but the last few chapters, I mean, Vegapunk is kind of traveling away from Egghead with the Straw Hats. Like, that's what he wants to do. Luffy gave him the go-ahead. He's like, yeah, sure, your head is funny, so come and travel with us. You know, no other reason, really. I mean, Vegapunk's like, I am the most brilliant scientist in the world, but the government is sending their cipher pull agents to eliminate me. Please, Straw Hat Luffy, you need to take me away from here. And, you know, Luffy was just kind of like, yeah, your head's pretty funny. All right, we could probably get some comedy routines out of this. You could travel with us, old man. Come on. Now, obviously, since then, Luffy, you know, had with the interaction with Sentomaru. Sentomaru was, you know, getting the crap beat out of him by Luchi, and he was, like, kind of losing consciousness. And he's like, Straw Hat, take old man Vegapunk off the island. Make sure he gets to safety. I'm not going to see the sunrise. And then proceeds to get shredded by an awakened leopard zone. But, you know, Luffy took his words with a lot of uh, merit. And he's like, okay, sure, I'm going to do that. Don't worry about it, okay? So, I mean, you can make a lot of jokes about Vegapunk joining the Straw Hat Pirates, which, you know what, though? We're getting into the ending part of this story. So, whereas not exactly Vegapunk will become an official member of the Straw Hats, I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I highly doubt that. But it's going to be a situation probably like Kinemon, you know, where Kinemon traveled with the Straw Hats for several story arcs. Okay, same thing with Law. He was just always palling around with the Straw Hats for quite a number of arcs there, like Punk Hazard, Dressrosa. Zo all the way up through Wano, okay? So it's going to be something like that. Vegapunk might seriously just be part of the story until the end of the story, right? Like, this is endgame level stuff. The Straw Hats are eventually going to end up at Laugh Tale sooner or later, sooner rather than later, I would suppose, and Vegapunk's traveling with them. So yeah, I mean, like, okay, there's another way to look at this, and it's this way, all right? Vegapunk obviously memorized all of the books at uh, Elbaf, all right, that were taken from Ohara, okay? And so because Jaguar D. Saul is still alive and he's on Elbaf right now. So if we're going to assume the Straw Hats are going to go to Elbaf after Egghead, because that definitely needs to happen now, all right? You know, already it was kind of like established because Usopp's dream was to go to Elbaf and meet the giants, you know, the great warriors of the sea. Then there was the whole setup with Big Mom. It's like, that's enough just in and of itself for me. But then also we find out that Jaguar D. Saul is still alive, Rob Robin's, like, only friend, or one of her only friends, and he's on Elbaf right now at this very instant. Okay, the Straw Hats have to go there. So you could just say Vegapunk could escape Egghead, they get to Elbath, and Vegapunk just stays on Elbath in hiding alongside Jaguar D. Saul, because that was already established. Like, like, that's the reason Saul is there to hide from the government. I'm assuming Elbaf is not allied with the world government. Um, there are giants that work for the government, but not all giants come from Elbaf, so other giants... I mean, the giants are allowed to leave Elbaf. 
Elbaf whenever they want and set up their own homes and everything. So the giant squad is probably made up a lot of giants that are uh, maybe not necessarily directly from Elbaf or there's some other story there or they just decided individually to join the government. It doesn't mean all of a giant kind is allied with the government. In fact, I'm pretty sure it isn't, um, you know, because there's not that many giants that really work for the Marines. There's John Giant and then LaCroix and Ronce and a few of the other unnamed giants in the giant squad. I'm saying giant a lot here. Ah, whatever. It's a fun word to say. Um, and then there's also uh, like Oimo and Kashi were the guardians, but the Marines actually had to trick them into becoming the guardians in any lobby. So I just feel like if Elbaf was officially allied with the world government, first of all, you'd see a giant at Reverie and we didn't. And also there'd be a lot more giants than just that squad working for the government. And we didn't see that. Okay. So pretty sure they're not allied. So that's where Saul is hiding out. So maybe Vegapunk goes to Elbaf and he hides out there and works alongside Saul to like decipher some, you know, uh, you know, books or something or, or other opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, Vegapunk travels with the straw hats all the way to laugh. Tale. So he's there to kind of gleam a scientific mind perspective from like everything that we're going to learn about the One Piece, everything we're going to learn about the Void Century, right? So I don't know. That That's a question for another day, honestly. Now we're going to finally get to the point of this video. I don't even remember what it was at this point. Hold on. Oh, oh yeah. Badass weapon upgrades. That's what this one's all about, all right? Let's just dive right into it, all right? Vegapunk's going to be traveling with the Straw Hats at least for a little while, and I'm sure he's going to be very grateful for them. I mean, he's already very grateful that they're going to take him off the island so he won't die. He's like, okay, I, I literally owe you, the Straw Hat Pirates, my entire life. Okay, so tell you what, until we reach Elbaf, until we reach the next island or whatever, and you can drop me off, because Vegapunk has yet to actually say where he wants the Straw Hats to take him. He's just like, get me off this island. He might have a specific destination in mind, but we don't know that yet. Or it might just be, get me off this island, I don't care where you go, just please leave. I don't, don't want to die here, right? So he might like take a bunch of equipment from his lab. Frankie and Usopp have a bunch of stuff on the Sunny, right? Frankie even said in one of the last chapters, like, I want you to come and see the Sunny and the Battle Frankie and all that kind of stuff, right? So I can imagine Vegapunk bringing a giant backpack full of equipment and they go on the Sunny and they rock it away from Egghead and he's like, okay, what do you guys want? I, I will make you anything. And Usopp's like, I mean, Usopp and Frankie would be the first characters, the first people on the Sunny that would just be like, Old Man Vegapunk, I want you to take a look at my Kabuto. And then Frankie would be like, I want you to take a look at my Battle Shogun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Usopp has this, like, elaborate slingshot that's part plant and, you know, part slingshot. And he's like, I want you to look at that thing. And then Frankie's like, yeah, and after you're done looking at Kabuto, I want you to take a look at my giant Megazord that I have in the rear hangar over here. And it's just like, okay. So Vegapunk's gonna have a lot of fun with that. Uh, I want to see Usopp, of course, getting an upgrade, and I want to see Frankie's, you know, Battle Shogun getting an upgrade, maybe to only, like, Battle Frankie 39, or something like that. Yeah, Frankie is 37, uh, well, actually, he's 36, but he's Battle Frankie 37, and then the, um, Iron Pirate Frankie Shogun is Battle Frankie 38, so maybe Vegapunk will upgrade it to 39, or maybe he'll make a whole new Battle Frankie, who knows, based on the blueprints, this is Vegapunk we're talking about here, okay? Um, but let's, let's dial that back to Usopp really quick, okay? What upgrades could Vegapunk give to Usopp? And then you start thinking, like, look, Vegapunk is easily 500 years ahead of his time. So he kind of even eclipses our current, like, world that we live in. So, like, every modern weapon that exists, with the exception of maybe, like, nuclear weaponry and stuff like that, is kind of on the table. All I'm saying here is that Vegapunk could really trick out the Kabuto, all right? We could get, like thermal sensing laser scopes on that thing. We could get, like, armor piercing rounds on the Kabuto. It is weird. I want maybe Vegapunk to bring up to Usopp. Like, you know, Usopp's talking about his Kabuto and how he made the design and how he upgraded it while he was on the Boeing Archipelago. And Vegapunk's looking at this, like, a, like a like elaborate slingshot. And like, ah, very fascinating Quasar, yes. Um... Have you considered using a gun, though? <laughs> it's just like, if you're the sharpshooter of the Straw Hat Pirates, and you're Soge King, you're the Sniper King from Sniper Island, um, have you possibly considered using a rifle? They're a lot more accurate, apparently, according to uh, science and, uh, you know, Gabuto. And honestly, though, I would like a moment where Vegapunk brings that up to Usopp because Vegapunk could easily throw together like a, a 50 cal sniper rifle for Usopp to walk around with. Like he could easily do that, right? All right. So 
Usopp might actually have a moment where he says and he actually explains why he doesn't use rifles or guns. Because you can't say he's never had the opportunity to. You can't say that the Straw Hats, while visiting a town, have never had the chance to go to a gunsmith and buy a, an actual gun or a rifle or something for Usopp. Here's a fun little piece of One Piece trivia. During uh, Whiskey Peak, when Miss uh, All Sunday or Robin attacks the ship, Sanji actually pulls out a gun. Like, it, he does. You know, it's it's very weird, you know, because it's like, that doesn't happen. The Strahds usually don't pull out guns very often. Nami pulled out a gun during Water 7. It's actually in the uh, the opening five, uh, but it doesn't happen super often on the uh, on the Straw Hats for them to pull out just, a, like, I'm holding, you know what I mean? You know, no. But Sanji did that. Sanji pulled out a gun against Rob, and then he, you know, immediately got it knocked out of his hands, okay? But, uh, yeah, so I guess the Strahds do have guns on the ship. They just never use them. Frankie's kind of built in. He's kind of like the entire body of Frankie is a gun gun. You know what I mean? You know, so uh, I don't know, but it would be cool for Usopp to explain that and just be like, oh, the reason I don't like to use rifles or guns is because that's what my dad uses. And I've always like really I I'm, I'm more comfortable with slingshots. So Vegapunk, can you upgrade my slingshot? And he'd be like, yeah, sure. I can upgrade your slingshot. Usopp gets like a laser sight on his slingshot or like a really cool. You know how like Van Auger has the glasses or the goggles that have like the sniper scope like built into it. So Usopp kind of has that, too. Uh, he has really fancy goggles, but it wouldn't it really be cool if like Vegapunk punk could do is like here's a laser scope here's thermal imaging technology like you understand most of the time Usopp is just you know he's like no scoping this pretty much you know with his uh, Kabuto right and he might have the goggles to keep the like the dust and stuff out of his eyes to focus and he's got observation now but imagine Usopp with observation hockey with like a modern day sniper scope I mean my god, okay, it would just be devastation from like five kilometers away, okay? So we could do that. He's got the pop greens, which are really cool, but I'm sure there's a lot of other like modern ammunition that Vegapunk could create, you know? Like I said, like armor piercing rounds, but also like shock bullets, you know, stun bullets or something like that hit the enemy and then like like, like 1.21 gigawatts and then knock them flat on the ground. Um, exploding bullets. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that Vegapunk could make. I don't think I have to sit here and go through every single one of them, but uh, Usopp could get definitely a weapons upgrade for that Kabuto, absolutely, okay? I mean, honestly, Vegapunk could make him, like, a ray gun if he really probably wanted to. He's already got lightsaber technology. You know, we got lightsaber technology, so why can't we have a laser gun, right? Now, Usopp might say no to that, but, you know, Vegapunk could still make it. Then we get to Frankie, and Frankie's like, I'll take the laser gun! I mean, I got the radical beam, but it would be cool if maybe Frankie could learn how to fire the, the radical beam in a, you know, quicker succession, like a rapid fire beam kind of ability, like change like the, the weapons left, you know, it's basically like a machine gun he has on his left hand. Um, maybe Vegapunk could turn those bullets just like lasers, like like laser pelting fire or whatever like that, okay? Um, my god, the, the limits in the technology that, like, when Frankie and Vegapunk put their heads together to make new weapons tech, that's going to be insane. Like, literally, like, a brand new Frankie Shogun, better laser technology, uh, you know, uh, Frankie himself transforming his whole body into, like, cannon mode, you know, how it's like certain Megazords could just transform into a tank or a cannon. That could just be Frankie now, all right? Where Frankie just walks up and just, like, a giant cannon, it's like, like, Von Stroheim from freaking JoJo Part 2, and just, like, you know, this is the apex of Straw Hat Vegapunk science! And there's like giant cannon just appears out of Frankie's stomach and just boom, boom. And that would be a great weapon for Frankie because it would involve a lot of thrusting, you know, and that's great. I mean, that's you don't need a better weapon for Frankie right there. Um, the Sunny could get a huge upgrade. Uh, Vegapunk could look at the whole cola engine thing and be like, here's a way to improve the cola tech, you know, or to use less energy or something like that. Vegapunk might know about cola technology or maybe he might not be familiar with it. And he's like, oh, this is fantastic. Fascinating, Quasar. You developed, you know, carbonated based engines. This is strange to me, but okay. I mean, to each their own. There's no one right way to do science. You know, it might be something like that. Um, 
My god, I've always wanted Frankie to get C-Prism equipment for, like, ever. I don't know if, like, uh, Vegapunk has that, or maybe he has the ability to make artificial C-Prism. He's lining the bottom of marine battleships with C-Prism, so I have to feel like he's got a way to artificially make this stuff, or take some actual ones and, like, dilute it. Like, maybe he takes a piece of C-Prism stone and turns it into a liquid somehow with science, and then he just, like, you know, spray paints the side of the, or paints the side of the boats, like, in the same way the coding mechanics do, because there's got to be a decent amount of this stuff if he's coating you know the battleships with it um so maybe he could give like sea prism line bullets or something to frankie that's something i've always wanted frankie to have right so yeah i mean there, there's a lot of ways you could upgrade frankie i could probably make just a whole video about that uh let's talk about nami next i think after usopp and frankie are done fanboying over vegapunk then nami would be like well or maybe usopp would go up to nami and be like nami let him mess around with your climb attack it's like, Usopp, please rephrase that. Okay, uh, let him adjust your weapon, uh, altering device. I'm like, yeah, it's, that's better. So, um, the thing is, though, Zeus is now living inside of it. So that would be really awkward if Vegapunk was, like, looking at the climb attack. Like, oh, Quasar, this is interesting. Oh, it extends. Oh, there's a face on it. And then Zeus appears, and he's just like, what are you doing, old man? This is my house. And it's like, oh, I was going to upgrade it. It's like, hmm. So maybe what if Zeus and Vegapunk work together, and Zeus is like, well, you know, I do, I, I, I do like the layout of the climb attack, but, I mean, if you can install a jacuzzi and maybe, like, a veranda, maybe a nice garden, and then Vegapunk's like, oh, sure, and he, like, modifies the climb attack, so it's, it's more powerful for Nami's sake, but also, like, it's larger for Zeus to, like, live inside as well. Actually, that would be... Okay, I know that Zeus was already an upgrade to the climb attack during, you know, Wano. Like, that was Nami's big upgrade. But seriously, like... This would fascinate the hell out of Vegapunk. This is an artifact of the Soul Soul Fruit, now given sentient life, living inside of a machine. Like, ghosts in the machine, kind of. Like, Vegapunk would be like, I'm going to figure out a way to now design the redesign the entire climate act so it functions with like Zeus as the power source and Zeus could like modify things on the inside of it okay i mean it's it's kind of like having a little buddy inside of a computer that can just help you do whatever you want with coding it's like having a porygon basically like imagine if a porygon actually existed and if you're like a person that like codes for a living you could just have like a little cyberspace buddy that be like hey porygon can you double check all that code all right, great. Hey, Vegapunk. I mean, yeah, can you modify the climb attack so Zeus can change this if he wants? Like, the, the climb attack might now, like, the next form of it, because we're already up to, like, the fourth version of the climb attack. Hold on, there was the first version that was at Alabasta, and then the second version after the dials, so the perfect climb attack. The third version was the sorcery climb attack after Witheria, and then now, yeah, we're on the fourth version right now. Technically, if you want to say maybe the fifth version, because Zeus is now part of it. So maybe the fifth version, and eh, version 4.5. Version 4 with the Zeus upgrade, the Zeus DLC, okay? Well, anyway, Vegapunk might make uh, Climb Attack version 5, and it's malleable. It, like, changes its form now. It doesn't just extend. I mean, it can still do that, but basically it can change into whatever shape it wants, uh, kind of like how Zeus was doing it, like, turning into the club and everything. It's just a lot more efficient now with Vegapunk tinkering with it, okay? Like, Nami could become the freaking Avatar with this thing in version 5, right? She could be like, you know, fire, wind, earth. You know, she could like summon, like, I know earthquakes aren't directly part of the weather. That's like more of geology kind of thing. But whatever, at this point, final level Nami. She takes the climb attack. Zeus turns it into a hammer. She strikes the ground with it and a giant tremor opens up. Nami has transcended meteorology. She's now the master of weather and geology. You know what I mean? That kind of crap. Plate tectonics is Nami's, yeah, whatever. Um, and then I'm forgetting an element here. Like, wait, hold on. Wind. Oh, water, water. Well, she always had water, you know, she could just summon like a tidal wave with that thing, okay? So yeah, I think Nami might be okay with getting an upgrade from the climb attack, alright? Especially if Usopp pushes it. Like, Nami, please, let, let Vegapunk look at your climb attack. Oh my god, Nami, it'll be insane, okay? And so, that, that might happen. What about the other Straw Hats? Because not a lot of the other Straw Hats really use, like, uh, advanced technology for their weapons. You know, Luffy certainly doesn't. Sanji, maybe Vegapunk will give him a new pair of shoes. <laughs> you know, Vegapunk's like, oh, what, how 
how do you fight, Sanji? He's like, well, I pretty much just kick things. It's like, all right, here's a really fancy pair of shoes. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. But, you know, he's got, like, steel-toed shoes, except they're, like, adamantium-toed shoes or something. Uh, Sanji's shoes are already specially made to be way more, like, durable than normal shoes. Like, he, he has special shoes that he walks around on. These are my magic shoes. Um, but, you know, aside from that, I don't know if Sanji could get everything else, really. Um, although he is now the modifications from the Germa, and Vegapunk worked with Judge. So maybe Vegapunk and Sanji could have, like, a back and forth. Oh, the raid suit! What? I'm, I'm, I'm freaking high right now. Um, the, the raid suit is kind of a big deal, right? Okay, yeah, it's like, hey, yeah, there's this raid suit. Maybe, like, Sanji still has the canister, but it's all busted and broken because Sanji smashed it. Vegapunk's like, why did you break this? This was Germa technology. Ah, I'll repair it. Shh. Here you go. This is One Piece, even though Sanji broke the canister, Frankie was able to rebuild an entire bridge within, like, two minutes at Thriller Bark, okay? So don't tell me that Vegapunk could just take the broken raid suit canister and, like, zip, 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 tss, tss. okay, there you go, and it would be good as new, okay? So, I really like the design of Stealth Black. I like that suit, and I understand why Sanji decided to break it, because he didn't want to become like his siblings. But we know he's not going to be like that, and we already have confirmed that. And Vegapunk could also scan the raid suit and be like, alright, I can remove any part of this that you don't want, and I could replace it with something better. You know what I mean? But the invisibility thing, I think, is still really cool. And Sanji, you know, like, that's his dream that he only had for, like, you know, two battles during uh, Wano, and that was it. So, I don't know, maybe Vegapunk could do something with the raid suit there or something with his body modifications, okay? Uh, Zoro, okay. Like, it would be really cool if Zoro has lightsabers, you know, if Vegapunk's looking at Zoro's swords and like, wow, those look like really cool swords, Roronora. Uh, I can make them into lightsabers if you want me to. And Zoro would just be like, nah. And he's like, okay, fair enough. And that would honestly be the whole conversation right there. You know, that would be the whole conversation. Um, who else here? Robin. Okay, Robin, I mean, once again, she's more of a melee fighter. Uh, I don't know. Maybe she could learn something from Black Maria and Vegapunk could make some really cool, like, knuckle dusters for Robin. Some, like, electrical knuckle dusters or, like, fire or something that can, like, punch enemies and, like, maybe impact, like, like impact dial knuckle dusters that just BAM! You know, I'm sure, actually, here's a theory, okay? You know how after the time skip when we got introduced to Brook, the Soul King, you know, Soul King Brook, and he had those, uh, he was selling the TDs, the tone dials. I always found it very interesting that tone dials were now so abundant in the Blue Sea world, they're using them as essentially the analog for CDs from our world. Like, there's just so many TDs now. So, we already learned that sometimes dials will fall down from the sky and people will pick them up and use them. Like, that's what happened with Brooke, basically. They just bought their tone dial at a random merchant. But th there would have to be, like, thousands and millions of tone dials falling down from the sky in order for them to, like, be selling them, like, CDs, okay? So, either, like, there's, like, Sky Island and Blue Sea trade has vastly improved in the last two years, which I doubt. Um, or Vegapunk figured out, like, he found a tone dial and he figured out a way to reverse engineer it and then mass produce it which might very well be the case so vegapunk might be able just to make any kind of dial or at least a machine that replicates dial tech on his own so he might just be able to make like here's a bunch of knuckle dusters that are like you know there's like 10 impact dials in these or like or, uh, reject dials in each one and then robin has those and she's just like you know he mano reject bam I think Robin can handle a reject dial at this point, especially if she makes, like, a giant fist, and then here comes the giant reject fist! You know? Robin, would you go out with me? REJECT FIST! And I was like, oh my god! Alright, so there we go, there we go, alright, 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 this is, this is shaping up to be a good video here. What about Chopper? What about Chopper? Okay. Chopper just had um, the rumble balls, um, you know, uh, their um, longevity, I guess, the, the increased time period, uh, you know, done by Caesar. So Caesar was looking at the rumble balls and he was like, ah, shoot, oh, no, 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 no. this is what you've been using, you silly reindeer. I will increase this with science. Okay, now he was able to use it for 30 minutes as a monster. However, it didn't really do much against Queen at the end of the day, and he also turned into Baby Gramps Chopper at the end, which I admit was very hilarious, but maybe we shouldn't have Chopper turning into Baby Gramps at every single time he uses the Rumble Ball now, okay? So Vegapunk, I think, is gonna look at those Rumble Balls, and he's gonna be like, Caesar was messing around with these, wasn't he? 
And Chopper's like, yeah, I mean, I didn't want to, but he said he could increase the time limit. We were going to fight against Kaido in the... You know, I, I needed more power. And Vegapunk's like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, little reindeer. I understand. But, um, yeah, Caesar's never really been great with... I mean, to be honest with you, his science has always been a little bit slapdash and a touch on the offensive. So, tell you what, I'll um, I'll completely redo the Rumble Ball. It's a chemistry. is like... <laughs> Okay, here you go. And it's now like a, a pink rumble ball or whatever. I imagine Caesar's rumble balls would be like a really pale, sickly green. But Vegapunk's are like a bright, vibrant pink or, or red or something. And like, here you go, blue reindeer. And just like, oh. And now it's like, it's like he turns into a monster point, but it's even more powerful. Okay, and Vegapunk has been experimenting with Awakened Zones. We just learned about some of the stuff he explained about Luchi's Awakened Zone. So now maybe Chopper could, uh, like he could truly awaken. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that, that form that you've been in, the monster point, it, it's sort of like a pseudo-awakening. That's a lot of popular, like, like a theory involving Chopper's monster point. Like, it's not quite a, a true awakening, but it's like getting there. And so maybe, maybe Vegapunk with all of his technologies be like, alright, I can make you a drug that will allow you to go into your true awakening. And then so we see it, and it's not really monster point, it actually looks a little bit more human, because remember, Chopper does have the human-human fruit. Oh! What if it's like this? What if what the original Rumble Ball did was take all of Chopper's forms and just push them together into one form, which was the monster point? Okay, so, like, the jumping power of jump point, the strength of uh, arm point, the horns of horn point, all that kind of stuff. He just, like, took all the different forms, mashed them together, and that was monster point. Very strong, but not actually an awakening, or maybe not a true awakening. Chopper's real awakening would be more human-esque. This is another popular theory because it's the human-human fruit, okay? Chopper has the true rumble ball, eats it, and then he turns into, like, a slimmed-down muscular form, and he's got the ribbon, because we now learn, like, that flame ribbon is something that's not just indicative of Luffy's Gear 4th or Gear 5th. That's something that's indicative of, like, most true awakenings. The reason that the Demon Guards did not have it was because the Demon Guards were not... They they, they awakened, but they lost their, uh, their, their sense of self in the process. And Vegapunk explained, that's usually how most of them go. Whenever you do awaken a zone, you'll usually just lose your mind. Okay, so it's not a true awakening. You can't control yourself, okay, like the Demon Guards did. Uh, Kai Kaido was probably an Awakened, he had the Ribbon. I don't know if Marco was Awakened, but he was a Phoenix, so he kind of had, like, the Ribbon of Fire. You can look at it like that if Marco was truly Awakened. And also, those are mythical, so they're like, they follow a different kind of, uh, different kind of path. Uh, didn't Yamato even have a Ribbon? So, you know, I don't know. But anyway, yeah, Chopper goes into his true Awakening, he's like a slimmed down, perfect human, he still has the blue nose. Uh, even more human than, like, his human point, his walk, not his walk point, his heavy point usually looks like. But now he's able to, like, you know, summon, like, horn on his fist or something. He's able to, like, fight in that way. I, I don't know how exactly it would go, how he would combat, if he could just summon horns or whatever on any part of his body, or he's like, I've mastered every form of human combat. I have now achieved... It's like, it's like Karapika's, um, Emperor Time in, in Hunter x Hunter, where Karapika is a conjurer in Nen, but has this special hacks ability where, oh yeah, when my eyes turn red, I can use all types of Nen at 100% efficiency. So whenever Chopper goes into this true awakening, he turns into a human, he gets the ribbon, and he's like, I can now use all three types of hockey at 100% mastery, but only for like 10 minutes or some shit like that, you know, like it's gonna be something like that. That would be cool. It's like every aspect of what it is to be a human, I can just do that, you know? Whatever. Okay, sure. I've mastered every type of martial art for 10 minutes. You know, that includes hockey. That includes the, the vibration martial arts that Sai and uh, John Chin Zhao mastered. Like, everything. You know, Fishman Karate. I've mastered everything. I've achieved battle enlightenment. That was something that was a joke in one of the SBSs, and I think it was actually a mistranslation, that one who, you know, awakens, or, like, if a human eats a human human fruit, they become unenlightened. I don't think that's what, like, Oda really meant with that sentence, but how crazy would it be if that's actually what happened? Like, you know, Chopper just, like, he eats the Rumble Ball, Vegapunk's Rumble Ball, and he's just like, Doom! And, like, all knowledge of humankind, like, everything humans, like, there's a moment, like, we see the evolution of man, like, slowly walking upright in, like, the Venusian man or whatever, like that, and then we just see Chopper there, like, at the center of it all, like, I feel like all of the collective knowledge of humankind is in my hands. Let's wreck Blackbeard's crew! Let's go! <laughs> you know, like, let's go! Um, that would be cool. 
That would be cool. All right. Uh, that's that's Chopper. Jean Bay. I Jean Bay doesn't use weapons. Jean Bay doesn't need weapons. You know, maybe Vegapunk could take something that he learned from S Shark and give it to. He's like, oh, I have the swim swim fruit. I could give it to you, Jean Bay. And Jean Bay's like, I, even though it's the swim swim devil fruit, I'd still prefer to swim in the actual ocean. And he was like, all right, fine. I I don't think Jean Bay would get really anything that special. Um, you know, maybe maybe Jean Bay because he's like a dad. You know, he's walking around. He's got like the Hawaiian shirt and everything. He's like the dad of the crew now. Maybe Vegapunk would uh, go up to Jinbei and be like, do you want anything, Jinbei, for Christmas? And Jinbei's just like, you know what? Give me a nice pair of wraparound shades, you know? And Vegapunk makes him, like, the best pair of wraparound shades. They function as, like, goggles underwater. I mean, Jinbei can see perfectly fine underwater. He's a fish man. But it's like, they're really cool. They light up and everything. It's it's really cool. Really good pair of shades for Jinbei. I need a new wallet chain. I'm like, alright, I'll make you the best wallet chain in the world. There you go. You know, he's a dad. I'll get you a nice pair. Like, I could use a new pair of cargo shorts. I'm like, all right. It's like they're like infinite pocket space cargo shorts. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like the ultimate dad gifts. Um, who else? Okay, like, um, uh, Brooke. Um, I mean, I, I, okay, Zoro, no, I don't think Zoro would go for the lightsaber. I don't think Brooke would also go for the lightsaber. He really likes, he, his soul solid is his cane sword that he's had ever since he was alive, okay? Like, it got sharpened by the Long Arm Tribe and, like, better maintained. But I don't think Brooke would just discard his cane sword for, like, another sword, you know what I mean? Although, um, like a laser sword or something. But you know what? Brooke might be okay with, like, maybe Vegapunk could make some kind of, like, universal instrument. Like, it's a device that can turn into any instrument at any time. Like, it can turn into a violin, it can turn into a keyboard, you know, he can turn into, like, a little keyboard arm, it could turn into, like, um, you know, a guitar, you know, it's like just transforms in any instrument whenever Brooke wants it. I, I think that would be something in Vegapunk's wheelhouse that he could make relatively easy. The universal instrument, you know, and I think, you know, maybe something like that Brooke would be okay with, right? Um... I feel like I, whenever I do these videos where I cycle through all the straw hats, I always feel like I forget them. There's like one I always forget. Uh, it's like, how could you forget Chopper? I'm like, okay, we are. Luffy wouldn't want anything. Like, what would Luffy ask for, really? I mean, Luffy would probably ask for, like, can I have a giant robot? And Vegapunk's like, well, how giant are we talking here? And Luffy would be like, well, about as giant as. Well, wait, no, I can turn giant now in Gear 5th. So, nah, I'm good. You know, they might make something, you know, cool for Luffy. Maybe, let me, Luffy will get the lightsaber. Here you go, Luffy. Here's a lightsaber. Saber. Here's something I didn't, you know, Zoro didn't want, so here you go. And then we have Luffy running around all hopped up on being Luffy with a lightsaber on gear fifth, waving a lightsaber around. That's terrifying, okay? That is absolutely terrifying, but epic, but cool. Uh, Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, Chopper, Robin, Frankie, Brooke, Jinbei. Yeah, those are all the Straw Hats. I, I covered all of them, okay. Well, anyway, yeah, um, that's the video, I guess, just to kind of go down, like, the Straw Hats Christmas wish list of, like, what weapon upgrades they could get from Vegapunk. Um, that's it. Um, despite the fact I mentioned, uh, you know, Porygon in this one, I actually don't have Porygon facts for you, sorry. Um, but yeah, this was a good video. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, later. See ya. Signing out. Bye.